devote your values. Statistics tell us that 70% of people in America claim to be believers in Jesus Christ, born-again believers in Jesus Christ. If we just went to the ballot box, there would be no non-believer that ever even got into office. Do you hear what I'm saying? When it comes to issues of social justice, you know, these bands were willing to go out there and address issues like racism, segregation. In our day, there's still issues. There's homelessness. There's unemployment. There's all kinds of things that are going on around us. There's still racism issues that abound in our day and our age. You know how we break through those? We do it with love. We do it by going out there and being active in the community, doing things like you recently did as you gathered together book packs, you know, backpacks and stuffed them full of school supplies. And many of you went out there on a Monday and took off of work that you could be out there helping in Clay County with St. Catharines as, you know, people came to get shots and people came to get haircuts and people came to pick up clothes and people came uh, because they didn't have the school supplies they needed to go back. And by your generosity, you helped meet those tangible needs. You addressed the social issues of the day helping people in their greatest time of need you deserve to be commended and I challenge you to keep that up might we be a people when we see issues in society not be a people that would sit back but we would go there we would engage those issues and help people in real and tangible ways I think as Christians we've talked a whole lot about what we think is important and what we value but man it's when that Foot action meets it out there that people's lives are changed. Might we be that kind of people that do it with our actions? So a couple simple things. When you see social justice opportunities, get out there and engage in them. This week, expected voter turnout is like 20% in these upcoming elections. If Christians just got out there and vote, no Christian, non-Christian candidate would ever make it. Get out there. Make the time to go out there on Tuesday, August 24th, this Tuesday, and vote your values. Amen? Final look at scripture, final look at the song. Ultimately, the answers to the problem of racism and government are solved through a deep and intimate relationship with God the Father. He's the only one who could truly turn circumstances around. He's the only one that could change our hearts and set the course for a nation. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, My people, or if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Might we be a people at Journey Church who are willing to get down on our knees and pray and intercede for this great community around us, this place where God has planted us, this place where he's brought you and I to to live our lives either for a short season or for a long season. I don't know how long God has you here, but while he's got you here, might we be a people who pray and intercede and believe God for a great future for this county and for this region. Can I get an amen? Sweet home Alabama where the skies are so blue. Sweet home Alabama, Lord, I'm coming home to you. As I shared earlier, I had heard this song probably a thousand times over the years, and frankly, I never ever even noticed the social or racial implications of the song. All that ever resonated me was the chorus, you know, Lord, I'm coming home to you, that, that thought of coming home to a great place where you want to be, that thought of coming home to the place where family is. There's no place like home. Can I get an amen? You get there and you get in your bed, praise God. I mean, just sleeping in your own bed is just a wonderful, wonderful thing. For some of you, home might not have been the best of places. I hope that's not your state today. You know, home might have been a place of fear. Home might have been a place of danger for you. You know, we pray that that circumstance has changed in your life. If it's not, you know, this is a safe place. We're here to help you. We're here to help get you through those difficult moments in life. That's part of what Journey Church is all about. You know, but for many of us, it was a great place. And that should be what it's like for those of us who believe in Jesus Christ. Home should be a safe place, a, a place of spiritual growth, a place of happiness, a place where we can all come together and enjoy what's going on in the Lord and help each other through the difficult circumstances of life. You know, I grew up in South Florida, and that was home to me for 30 years. I really knew anything different. And when we moved here, God stirred something in our hearts where Clay County and, and this region just became home to us. And when we go visit South Florida, it's no longer home. It's kind of cool to see where it's been and what our old house looked like, but it's always good to get home. We love it here. We believe God's planted us here for a purpose and a reason that we could influence this community with the vision that he's birthed in the life of Journey Church. And you know, we got an opportunity to ask Johnny Van Zant. You know, you've, you've 
gone all over the world. You're, you're a rock star. I mean, you've, you've been everywhere. Why Clay County? You know, what in the world are you doing here? And it's funny, you might not know him, but you might see him on the screen in just a second and say, I've seen him in Publix. I've seen him in the Starbucks. And, you know, when I think rock star, I don't think seeing him in Publix right next to you. You know, you just don't think those kinds of things. And, you know, you're talking about a 40-year history as a band. You're talking about a person who is, um, you know, just inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame who has hit songs galore, but he conducts himself as just a regular faith-based, Jesus-inspired, Holy Spirit-filled dude that you'll meet out there on the streets. Listen to what he has to say. I've been all over the world, and there's no better place than right here to me. You know, whenever I die, I want sand or seashells or something thrown on me, or maybe some of that good old Clay County clay, you know, out there, you know. But, uh, uh, you know, my, my roots are here, my kids are here, and uh, I've had many people in abuse of go, boy, you need to go and live in Nashville or New York or L.A. and forget it. <laughs> forget it, you know, but... Uh, uh, I did actually, whenever I was 17 years old, I moved to L.A. for, for, for well, a little over three months and about starved to death and didn't have enough money for curtains in my apartment, so we put up aluminum foil, you know, <laughs> to keep the sun out, yeah. It was three, three, me and three other guys, you know, but we had a great time. It was a great experience, but, but this, this part of the country, you know, Florida in general and and, uh, or should I say South Georgia? <laughs> yes. You're not a Gators fan, are you? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that last statement disappointed me gravely. <laughs> you know, but you could hear his heart for home. You could hear his heart for family. You could hear his heart to be here in this area, in this region. And, you know, I hope that you feel the same way. You know, our greatest desire, as I shared in the beginning, is that you might feel home in this place. Why? Because Christ is in this place and he loves you dearly and you know for some of you you may have strayed away from him for some period of time in your life and you might be here for the first time and hopefully God's stirring in your heart that sense that he is the father looking to connect with that prodigal son you know he's never left you he's been sitting there waiting for you to come home he's been watching and looking out the door saying I long for the day that my son or daughter comes home he, he loves us so dearly and uh he wants us to come home. For some of you, that means he wants you to come home maybe for the very first time. You don't have a relationship with him, and, and today you just sense a tugging in your heart that you need that sense of belonging. You need that sense of forgiveness. You need that sense of understanding of who God really is. I believe scriptures teach us that God's placed a sense of eternity in our heart, that we were never really created to live here in a fallen, sinful earth. You know, he created us to live in heaven for all eternity in relationship with him. And when Adam fell, it kind of messed things up just a little bit, right? But there's this longing for home in our hearts, this heavenly home. There's this longing in our heart to be with him in heaven. The Bible, the Bible describes it in Ecclesiastes 3.11. It says, yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. Philippians 3.20 says, But we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. He will take our weak and mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power with which he was willing to bring everything under his control. Would you rise with me? Close your eyes. Bow your heads for just a moment before we conclude today. The song's chorus concludes with, Lord... I'm coming home to you. You know, maybe the words that I've shared, the things that I've spoken about today are resonating with your heart. Maybe you're the one that I talked about who had that relationship with him. You're realizing that he really never left you, but maybe you walked away for a season and today's the day you want to come home. And in one sense, you're scared, you're nervous, you're afraid of what daddy's going to say. You're afraid he might whoop you because of the things that you've done. When in fact, the opposite is true. He knows that by grace you're set free and he's waiting for you with open arms to say, come home, my son or daughter, come home. For some of you, it might be the very first time that you're considering such a thing. I ask you, will you respond? Christ loves you. He died for you. He was willing to go to a cross that he might reestablish right relationship between you and the Father. Will you choose him today? Eternity is knocking at your heart and calling you to respond. If you're of either of those two groups, here's what I would ask you to do. We would love to pray with you. We would love to join you in prayer. Many at each of our services before this 
have raised their hand. They've come to the front. They've believed God for a better future for themselves, for their family. They've received the forgiveness that comes in a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, last week, 47 people were baptized. This family is growing. God is on the move, touching hearts and changing lives. Will you be one of those lives that he's touched today? Might your life change right here in this place? If that's you, would you do me a favor? Would you raise your hand up high? I'd love to know who I'm praying with. I see you and you and you. Here's a challenge that I have for you and before you. If you raised your hand or maybe you didn't and you wanted to, we would love to pray with you. We'd love to shake your hand. We'd love to put some resources in your hands so that you could walk out of here and start this new walk of faith in a powerful and strong way. Here's what I want you to know. There's no reason to be embarrassed. No, there's many people who have gone before you who have done this. This is what's going to happen. If you choose to walk up here to the front, everybody's going to clap. They're going to rejoice with you. They're going to be excited. We're going to pray with you. We're going to hand you some resources, and then we're going to be dismissed. But it could be the best walk that you've ever taken in your life. So here's what I want you to do. Congregation, would you begin to clap for those who raised their hand? And if you raised your hand, I want to encourage you to just make your way to the front. If that's you, please be bold. Come on up here and make your way to the front. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations. Thank you for stepping out in faith. God bless you. Anybody else? Come on. Anybody else want to come up here today? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you would, bow your heads and close your eyes for one more minute. Let's all repeat this prayer as an act of faith together. Lord, we just love you. We praise you. Jesus, you are our king. We thank you for dying on a cross that we might have eternal life. We realize that by your blood we are set free. Father, from this day forward, we will live our lives to serve you and you alone. We rejoice, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. Jesus, we just love you. And everybody says, amen. Would you put your hands together for this man and for those of you who, God bless you, sir. Congratulations. God bless you. Feel free to have a seat. Thank you for being bold enough to come up to the front. And thank you all for choosing to come out and worship with us today. What a great day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he give you peace in Jesus' name. Live your lives to make a difference in the lives of others. Have a great day, everybody. Bring a friend back with you next week.